This is why I usually preload the dice before the meeting, because this can take... Okay, I don't think I've done this question before. Let me just double check. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. I haven't done this question before, so I will do that. Okay. So, um, this question says, a uh, uniform rod of mass, some mass, and some length is free to rotate. Okay, the rod is released from rest. And, oh, they've given the angle, okay. For each question below, keep an organized record of, okay. Uh, what is the angular rod? Uh, so let me just sketch this out so that I have a uh, way to think this through. So I have a rod, and after this swings down, the rod is going to be at uh, through the horizontal position. So I'm looking at when the rod is going to be at this position, swinging down. So I'm thinking through two snapshots, snapshot A and B, and when it asks the angular speed of the rod, uh, I'm thinking through, um, well, so uh, by this time in the class, we've covered quite a few, uh, well, three or four uh, problem solving strategies tools. Of those, the one that I always recommend that you try first is conservation law. Uh, not because it'll always work, but because it, when it doesn't work, it'll be relatively quick to rule out. So you have to think through what kind of quantities are conserved. And if there's no conserved quantity, then okay, you can use it. Um, here, I have a sense that with all the description I have so far, that this is free to rotate, and I don't get the sense that there's any um, non-conservative force doing work. So I think energy will be conserved. So we'll work with the conservation of energy and see if it gives us enough information to write down enough equations to work out what it's asking for. So they are asking for angular speed. Yeah, so what is the angular speed in snapshot B? So I start with uh, my uh, conservation law equation, which is to say the total quantity of the conserved quantity, total energy in one snapshot is equal to the total energy in another snapshot. That's what it means for energy to be conserved. And I write out all the different contributions to total energy that I can have. I have a gravitational potential energy. I have potentially kinetic energy. Um, but I can get the sense that I think it's released from rest. Rod is, yeah, released from rest. So I'm going to say, okay, the kinetic energy here will be zero. So I won't bother writing down all the things. And... Um, I'm going to have gravitational potential energy of the rod at snapshot B. Let me do this thing that makes things simpler for me. Let me say Y is equal to zero here. Then I can write down my gravitational potential energy at that point is going to be zero. So now I have to write down the different forms of kinetic energy. It's going to be uh, one half uh, mass of the rod times the velocity of center of mass squared plus... Um, one half i omega squared. Um, now here I think I actually have two different choices. So the version I've written is where I write down translational kinetic energy of center of mass and uh, rotational kinetic energy about center of mass. This is something that you can always do. You are all, never forbidden from doing that. Now in this setup there's one simplifying feature you have a fixed point. So you could choose to describe the entire thing as just the total rotational kinetic energy about the, about the fixed point. So you could write down just to one half I omega squared. The main thing to be careful is that your omega should be the correct expression for the rotation inertia, you know, rather spun about the, one of the end points. Um, now, since that's a little bit of an easier method, let me do the harder one just to show. So, you know, you can do the easier one and use that to check my answer, uh, make sure that they uh, agree. Uh, both methods should give you the same answer if they are both correct. So let me write this out. The gravitational potential energy, I have to be careful. I have to use the center of a mass to express the gravitational potential energy. Let me write this as a lowercase h for now, and I'll write it in terms of given quantities later. 
think yeah length l so well uh, the, when i do later it'll end up being um l over two for half of the length times sine theta that's what that height will be so uh, gravitational potential energy is mgh is equal to that expression one half mass times the velocity of center of mass oh uh let me write it that way for now and i will um, rewrite, have to rewrite it in a bit. Plus one half. The rotational inertia of a rod spun about its center of mass. You shouldn't know where to look it up from, you know, from our textbook. Um, you know, know what section to go to. Here in the interest of time, I'm going to write down the expression that I do have memorized. This is a one twelfth uh, mass times the length the squared and omega squared. Now, as you look at this expression, before you start doing any algebra, you should always do this step. Count the number of equations, one equation, and number of unknowns. So, you know, mass is known, or you or treat it as known, hoping it'll cancel out. G is known. H, I have an expression there, so let's say it's known. And you have velocity and omega, you have two unknowns. So one equation, two unknowns, uh, that's actually not enough to solve. So here you have to think it through and get an expression for velocity of the center of mass, you know, how fast this point is moving in terms of angular velocity. And if you have um, the, uh, this is the expression that comes up in like rolling without friction, oh, sorry, rolling without slipping and other scenarios. Um, you should have this uh, relationship between tangential velocity and angular velocity. The tangential velocity at this point is equal to the angular velocity of the whole rigid thing times the distance to the, um, the fixed point. So that'll be L over 2. So I'm going to plug this in make this into equation of only one unknown in terms of all known quantities. And I'll plug in the expression for H as well at the same time. So mg L over 2 times sine theta is equal to 1 half m uh, L over 2 squared, omega squared, plus 1 half, 1 twelfth ml squared, scroll a little bit um, omega squared I hope you see that omega squared and uh, like factors out so I can um, do a little or ml squared can factors out so let me do this a simplification mgl sine theta over 2 is equal to let me factor out the things that factor out ml squared omega squared and the rest is a matter of um, the fraction algebra so one half times one fourth, so one eighth plus uh, one half times one twelfth, so one over twenty four. And I can do a little bit of cancellation for simplification. Mass cancels out, one factor of L cancels out, and I think I can solve for omega. In the interest of time, I'll leave fractions as they are. That's uh, perfectly allowed to do. So doing the rest of the calculation in my head, omega is square root of g sine theta over 2L, don't forget that, times 1 over 8 plus 1 over 24 square rooted. So that's my answer for A. I think I already used the 10 minutes. Uh, let me. Sine theta divided by 2 times L times 1 over 8 plus 1 over 24. Um, that's omega is equal to that. Um, yeah, 10 minutes, okay. Uh, at the moment when the rod is in the horizontal position, what is the angular acceleration of the rod? Oh, there, um, it's uh, actually a, an entirely different question. So, um, so if, uh, so when you are doing this question, so you would, you know, think of, okay, can I solve, answer this question using conservation law? And your answer should pretty quickly get to, oh, no, I can't. Uh, conservation law doesn't give me angular acceleration and while there might be a way to get at it it's going to be really complicated so um, at this point in the step you should uh, try other problem solving tools you've learned and one of the tools that you have learned is the standard strategy Newton's law you know 
Newton's law gives you acceleration with the translational motion. So um, you, you use the rotational version of that. So I have this extended body. I have the pivot point. And I can say that all the gravitational force acts at the center of mass. F, G. And there's going to be some sort of pivot point that I may need to figure out. And uh, let me look at it here. So I'm only looking for angular acceleration. Um, so, you know, angular acceleration is net torque divided by rotation inertia. If I treat this motion as being pure rotation about this point, that'll simplify my calculation a lot. I don't have to worry about torque due to the pivot point because the level arm is zero. This level arm is super simple, L over two. So I can, I can just uh, write out the rest. Um, my angular acceleration is going to be net torque, which is due to just this one force. Clockwise torque due to gravitational force, mg. The lever arm is L over 2, so L over 2 times mg. That's the net torque, clockwise. Divide by rotation inertia. And here you have to be careful because I'm using this as my center of rotation. I should make sure that uh, I use the correct uh, expression for rotation inertia of a rod. Spun about its end point. So it's going to be one third ml squared. And even though you don't have to have this memorized, you can look it up in the textbook. Having it memorized will speed up your problem solving. So I do recommend um, having it memorized. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, if you work with these enough, they kind of automatically get memorized. Uh, with the practice comes like that. So, okay, this is, so it's going to be 3 halves. 3g over half L. So that's angular acceleration. Uh, alpha is equal to 3 times g over 2 times L. All right, uh, I got... How many time? Uh, seven minutes. Okay, for the remaining two questions below, assume that and that. Okay, rather swings down. Consider the moment when the uh, keeps changing positions. All right, rod is gonna be now in the vertical position uh, at the bottom, I think. Okay, let me call this a snapshot C. Um, I estimate the force on the rod at the pivot point. Uh, at this moment. Oh, I see. So I can uh, think through two things. So, you know, so because it's asking you for the pivot force, here now you have no way of avoiding um, doing the, the standard strategy and actually figuring out what the pivot force will be. Now, as you draw the free body diagram, if you are thinking um, that on this extended object, I have a force of the pivot here. I have gravity acting here. And you are thinking, oh, they are going to equal and opposite. So net force uh, Fp minus Fg will be zero. If you do that, you have fallen into my trap <laughs> of trying to get you to say that, that pivot force is Mg. Uh, what you have to consider is you have to consider the fact that this is moving it's got some speed of the center of mass. And um, now to do this correctly, you have to actually treat this as extended body and do all that. <laughs> if you, <laughs> but on order of magnitude estimate is fine. And I think I have only like five minutes left. So I'm gonna just uh, um, treat this, uh, do this uh, alternate picture. Uh, one that makes a calculation doable. One where so I have the pivot force that I am considering, and I'm going to treat all of my all of my mass as if it's at the center of mass, moving at speed of vcm at that point. And uh, let me just make sure I, my velocity vector is not mistaken for um, force vector. And there's going to be a gravitational force mg pulling it down. So when I calculate the net force, it's not going to be a zero it's going to have centripetal force to keep this mass in circular motion. So it'll be mass times Vcm squared over the radius, which would be L over two, L over two. So that's what I have to work out. So I see that um, I have one piece of missing information that I need to work through. 
my VCM. I can't just reuse the VCM from above. Although I can, uh, I can um, um, reuse many of the pieces in the calculation. I just have to use the uh, apply the conservation law strategy again in the context with the snapshot C. So let me just uh, paste that over here and make the necessary changes. So my snapshot B is now changing for snapshot C. Uh, let me erase this. And I'll still use the same, uh, actually, so can I? Or um, I think I'm running out of time. So let me, in the interest of time, let me do this. Uh, what I can do is instead of redoing the whole calcul, wait, no, I, I, I do have to redo the whole calculation, never mind. Um, I thought I could take the result in A and double it. But I don't think I can because the the geometry that I'm ending at it's not symmetric. So I actually have to work out the whole thing. So um, so I have this. So snapshot A doesn't have to change. I'm gonna keep everything on the right hand left hand side. All I have to change are the things on the right hand side. This will be C. Uh, let me just double check the time here. Uh, three minutes. Okay, might be enough to work out part C. Um, so here, all of this um, expression doesn't change. Um, what is changing? Oh, I see. Uh, I said the gravitational potential energy is zero. It's not going to be zero. It's going to be minus mg times L over 2. So I have to put that in. So wherever I see L over 2 sine theta, that actually is going to become, um, there, that's going to need plus uh, L over 2. So I guess what that means is sine theta gets replaced by sine theta plus one. Yeah, so sine theta plus one. So that's gonna be omega. So, um, so my um, V center of mass will be, um, will be L over two times this omega. So let me just uh, type this out. Um, the F pivot, uh, pivot is equal to m times g plus uh, m times v center of mass squared over L over 2, where v center of mass is equal to L over 2 times omega, where omega is equal to square root of g times sine theta plus 1 divided by 2 Times. I'll, and I'll double check this answer with more time when I have more time after the time limit runs out. Um, and this is a complete answer because I've given this expression in terms of all the quantities that I can actually get numerical value of. And I'll say, uh, uh, plug in numbers later, running out of time. Um, so I'll do D first, uh, estimate the amount of time necessary for the right, come back to the original position. Oh, that's so, oh. So, easiest way to do it is to um, get the VCM here, or um, running out of time. How I would do this is I will get a VCM from above, take VCM over 2 to be approximately the average speed, and then um, actually um, get omega from above, take um, omega over 2 to be approximately the average angular speed and then um, uh, take the total angular distance of uh, um, so it's going from 60 degrees down to 90 and then so it's going to be 180 plus uh, 280 degrees uh, so pi plus uh, plus um, 120 is, uh, so that's gonna, 120 is what? I think 2 thirds pi, so um, that's gonna be 5 thirds pi, um, take the distance that, 
and divide it by the average angular speed, which will give an approximate uh, amount of time. <laughs> All right. Um, so let me wrap this up uh, in the the yeah <laughs> yeah so. And, uh, you know, as I keep saying, 20 minutes is not a lot of time. And while I have an excuse of saying, oh, I only ran out of time because if I was explaining stuff, but I do recognize that. So for, let's say, if I'm describing a typical A student, um, if you are able to work through A and B completely, that would actually be good. And uh, partially work through C and D and explain some of your partial work here. That's what I would expect for an A student. So um, when you don't completely finish everything within time limits, don't think you have done poorly. Um, you probably did okay, as long as you made a good progress through the question. So let me just paste it in this for A. I'm sure my A is actually completely right. Uh, although, let's double check it with the answer key. I'll go into instructor view and double check it with the answer key. And I'm pretty sure B is also completely right. But again, we'll double check it with the answer key um, in, in case I don't know. I was under time limit and couldn't uh, double check. So C, okay, C is where I need to actually, because um, uh, I think uh, in C I was expected to put a numerical answer and I didn't. So let's uh, uh, do the numerical answer for C. And By the way, if you are working on this close to the due time, then I don't recommend that you do a whole bunch of work in this screen. Because when the due date comes, it'll kick you out of the system and you might lose work. Always do your work on a separate thing. So actually, let me do that. Um, so I'm going to just uh, um, do this thing in uh, SageMath. Uh, so actually, uh, let me let me use the online version of SageMath. And uh, yeah, yeah, so this will, I think, work well enough. So Sage uh, Cell, I think. Uh, I don't remember you are okay so we'll declare the variables so I just using this to plug in numbers I need um, velocity of center of mass um, or sing down yeah yeah, yeah. so um, so my expression for the FP bot FP is uh, well, actually I don't need that M G M uh, V C M L so my expression for F pivot is m times g plus m times vcm squared divided by L over 2. And if I just evaluate, it'll show me that. Oh, I have to print FP. Uh, it'll show me that expression. Great. I need to plug in the numbers. I need an uh, um, expression for vcm actually. So let me. Um, let me do this. I'm going to FP uh, substitute in for VCM. That's going to be what I have there. L divided by 2 times omega. Oh, I need expression for omega. And I'm after this, I'm going to substitute in what omega is. Uh, omega is um, square root of G times the sine, uh, G times the sine of um, theta plus 1. Uh, divided by 2 times L times 1 over 8 plus 1 over 24. Square root it. Okay, I need the uh, symbol for theta. So let's see if uh, that gives me something that's uh, um, an expression. Ah, I incomplete input. Okay. I think I probably was missing, yeah, missing a incomplete input. Uh, let's see. I have, oh, wait, I need one more parenthesis there. All right. Okay, so I have uh, some expression there. Let's plug in everything. Um, so into that expression, I'm substituting in m is equal to 0 0.1 kilogram, l is equal to 2.5 meters, and 
actually. I think I can do a line break. Yeah. And what else do I need? I need a theta 60 degrees, which is pi over 30. Uh, let me do numerical approximation over 33. Pi over 3, that's 60 degrees. Um, I need a g of 9.8. I think that's everything. Um, evaluate. So 3.723, that should be in newtons. So I'll say um, plugging in everything. And also put it in here. Um, uh, so f of pivot is a three point. Oops, um, wait. I only have the code. I forgot to copy the uh, copy the answers. Uh, not tall enough to copy everything together. Okay, so. That's going to be it, and replace that with that. So F pivot is 3.723 newtons, probably. <laughs> we'll double check with the answer key. Um, so, in, so I think the way I was doing it here, I didn't quite get the intermediate number I need. So let me, uh, so let's call this FP number, and let's go uh, get a, uh, the expression for V center of mass, which is coming from here. I'll just, uh, um, so L over two times omega, that's a mathematical expression. Oh, to that, I'm substituting in all these. Let's make sure that that actually um, gives me a quantity. Okay, that's a quantity. Let me substitute in these values that I was Substituting in earlier, uh, make sure that this goes through numerical approximation. Uh, in fact, let me just to make sure that that's what I have with the FPN that I didn't miss something. Okay, good. Just okay. So what it's saying is my uh, VCM at the bottom is uh, 5.86 meter per second. That's what it says. So uh, for D, uh, VCM at the bottom is given by this, um, or 5.856 meters per second. So VCM, sorry, I don't want VCM, I want omega. I, um, <laughs> let me go back <laughs> and get the expression for omega. Uh, yeah, so I actually just needed um, this. Actually, I could have been a lot simpler, sorry. That was omega. And into that, I just uh, wanted to substitute in this. Okay, that's what I want. Uh, unmatched. Oh, uh -huh. pretty sure, yeah, there's a square root thing. So I need the whole thing to be inside that. Okay, so, uh, so this uh, gives me omega. Let me make sure for the uh, omega at the bottom is given by. Um, so omega is uh, 4.684 radians per second. Um, so uh, so the average um, omega is half of this. Uh, omega average is 2.342 radians per second. And um, uh, the sin and since uh, average omega is a delta theta over delta t, delta t is uh, delta theta over average omega. And uh, I worked out delta theta in the answers above. Um, it was it was a five over three pi. Probably right. Uh, within order of magnitude anyway. Um, so it'll be, um, so 5 over 3 pi divided by 
uh, 2.342 radians per second uh, is equal to, and I'll just do the calculation in Sage Math since everything's already set up here. So this is going to be omega average if I multiply this by 0 0.5, and I have for the delta t, it's going to be um, numerical approximation of 5 over 3 times pi divided by omega average. So 2.235 seconds. Uh, 2.235 seconds. So Okay, so let's uh, save work and continue. And uh, so, you know, if I do review work in Gradebook, it won't actually, um, it won't give me oh, one, all those other attempts. Uh, it won't give me access to the answer key. So I need to go in as an instructor to be able to actually access answer key and double check the, the, um, the <laughs> I didn't make any mistake doing this question in a hurry. So I'm going through my instructor view on the second screen to uh, get to that question. Um, let me see here. Use course, test the student. All right, this is the test the student to work. Attempt four, great. So I had this, G sine theta and all of that. Uh, G sine theta. Um, over L <laughs> so <laughs> to be able to compare <laughs> I'm gonna need um, need this uh, let's see here so um, what I need is I need a uh, I need a, a numerical version of that expression to make sure so I'm gonna do everything except for square root of G over L and it should come out to be 1.612 so let's do that. Uh, square root of uh, sine of uh, 60 degrees or pi over 3 um, divided by 2 times 1 over 8 plus 1 over 24. And numerical version of that. It's 1.61, close enough to 2. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so that's correct and the answer here 3g over 2l yep that's correct good <laughs> and this is where it gets uh, tricky um, so within my attached work what I worked out was it was gonna be 3.723 newtons let's see 3.723 newtons and in fact the way I approximately did it is how um, how I would expect people to do it. Now to do it exactly, you have to, oh wait, uh, yeah, here actually the exact answer matches the uh, approximate answer, but um, it's pure accident. I don't think they're in general expected to match up. Uh, and here I worked out the duration of time of um, 2.235 seconds. And that was uh, 2.235. The approximate time, where is it? Uh, did I miscalculate? Um, 150 degrees. Um, the answer key might have an error. Um, Estimate to come back to the original position above horizontal. So it goes through here, 360 degrees, and then comes back. Um, so they work, oh, oh I missed, because uh, I worked it out for where it gets here. So the number I have, you have to double it for it to be correct. So the, um, the number I have here, um, 2.235, you have to double it for 4. Uh, Four seven. Uh, so let's see if it's four point four seven. Um, yeah, four point four seven. That's the the answer. Yeah, yeah. So 
okay, vector of twelve, and um, to do it uh, exactly, the answer key does it with this um, sage math code, um, and it's actually pretty close. It's not too far, you know, approximately three point nine, and this is imaginary, I think, <laughs> three point nine one five. So it's you know within uh, within what uh, twenty percent of the approximate value. So.